Cabot Abram Yerksa was born June 11, 1883, to Frederick Yerksa and Nellie Cabot in Sioux Territory at his father's trading post in North Dakota. In childhood, Cabot worked menial tasks for his father's chain of grocery stores in Minnesota. Starving for something more adventurous, Cabot threatened to run away in his mid-teens. He found his way to Nome, Alaska, where he sold cigars to gold prospectors, adding to the nearly $2,000 he had saved. The area was dotted with 8x10 tents, and very little business had yet to arrive for the Klondike Gold Rush. He conceived a plan as early as 13, but his father forebode the idea. Cabot made do, leasing part of his tent to a barber and a newspaper vendor. Between the two, he opened his cigar shop, Jokingly, he said that soldiers were brought in and had to walk back to back so they wouldn't get shot. Cabot did business and friended the Inuit, learning some of their language, which he delivered to the Smithsonian Institute. This knowledge inspired him to stay amongst the Sioux on the Dakota prairies, partaking in their culture and studying their language. In 1902, at the end of the Spanish-American War, he traveled to Cuba, with his father to sell land and build houses for Americans. The investment backfired, though, as Cuba did not fall into U.S. hands and Cabot had to look elsewhere. Four years later, the family moved to Southern California, where Frederick and his other son, Harry, purchased an orange ranch in Riverside County. Around 1908, Cabot became a postmaster of Sierra Madre, living with his wife, Margaret, in Pasadena. But upon his father's death in 1910, Cabot went on to manage his father's citrus grove. But the freeze of 1913 left the orchards in replete and Cabot $80,000 in loss. His younger brother Harry moved to Berkeley in modest living while Cabot tried to pick up the pieces in quite the opposite accommodations. After a short stint in Idaho, Cabot learned and took advantage of the last era of the Desert Lands Act. In a nutshell, it was part of westward expansion and amended the Homestead Act of 1862. Any citizen, or those wanting to be, could apply to irrigate and reclaim the land. By October of 1913, Cabot arrived in Coachella Valley with his friend Robert V. Carr, a cowboy poet, planting their stake on 160 acres of what was initially known as Two Bunch Palms. Cabot said that Bob, as he called him, had the better homestead. The car cabin was on a sandy shelf 30 feet above the desert floor, with a clear view to the south and of San Jacinto Mountain. On the west was a thick high bunch of mesquite, which gave ample shade and furnished complete protection from the west wind. It was built of up and down boards with cracks covered by bat strips. All knot holes are covered carefully with tin can covers. The one living room was 10 by 14 feet, cast iron stove at the east end and a small sleeping porch at the west end. The only furniture was a plain pine unpainted table with Bob's typewriter the only dictionary in the desert, and a few books of synonyms. Three plain wooden chairs and a couple of boxes for extra seats and a pile of mesquite wood for fuel completed the cabin requirements. Bob's wife, Stella, furnished the house with plants and cans, homemade curtains, and carefully picked magazine cutouts to line the wall. Meanwhile, Cabot and Margaret were looking to survive each day. Cabot had the grueling task of hauling water from the seven-mile distant settlement of Garnet once a week with his favorite burrow he delightfully called Merry Christmas. Cabot slept on the ground by fire and dug a hole in a hillside without amenities. Little by little, he constructed a small cabin for his family and newborn Rodney. Food was sparse as they hunted whatever small game they could yield and used coyote fur for warmth. Typically, they had beans, dry pancakes, potatoes, and maybe wild rabbit if they were lucky. 
Candles were used in winter but melted by summer. Critters were always getting into things and taking things away. With the guidance of a Native American friend, Cabot learned about a hot mineral well and a little further afield, a cold spring. As the former was on someone else's property, Cabot used a dowsing rod and dug a well, opening what would later refer to as Desert Hot Springs. With the two wells, hot and cold, he called his homestead Miracle Hill. In 1918, Cabot joined the army to enter into World War I. He furthered his passion for art from here, attending Academy Julien in Paris, France. Returning, Cabot began building what would eventually become his Pueblo structure from parts of their original cabin. Artists would stay and work at the Pueblo, which was being added daily. Cabot became good friends with Carl uh, Idle, a notable artist, who would visit and take painting trips together. Soon, Cabot brushed shoulders with the Hollywood crowd thanks to the nearby B-Bar H. Dude Ranch. Cabot took odd jobs to supplement his building and even ran a general store in Ventura County for 11 years. By age 58, Cabot had collected many pieces of Native American art and various artifacts through his travels around the Americas. He continued constructing his home with repurposed materials like railroad ties, telephone poles, and wood and glass from abandoned cabins. He brought in the sand with his Model T and rocks and water for cement came in barrels. He remarried in 1945 to Portia Graham, a psychologist who studied metaphysics. A common interest was in life outside of Earth, and with plentiful stars, Cabot built her a stargazing roof that the two enjoyed. He believed the ever-involving construction of their home was keeping him alive. So he continued working on what would become the museum, building it, curating it, and promoting the town where he lived as Mr. Desert Hot Springs until his death on March 5, 1965 at 81. Today, visitors can see Cabot's Hopi influence four-story Pueblo with 35 rooms, 150 windows, and 65 doors. Because of the repurposed materials, not one area is alike. Cabot's legacy is ingenuity and his teaching principles of reuse, recycle, and reduce are ever so important. This has been Biographies of the West. My name is Lauren Morgan Richards. Thanks for watching.